Hey everybody, Donna with Photonic Health, and this edition of Health Made Simple, we have an extra special, special guest, and her name is Becky Tengis. And we actually met Becky when she came to take one of our in-person courses. Um, and since then, we've known her. I mean, we've known you now, Becky, for since, what, 2012? I look back. Um, Brian and I actually met at the Dr. Ridgway Conference in September of 2014. Right. Then I... Um, did my level one quickly, did that in January of 2015. And then my level two was February of 2015. Right. Yeah. It's crazy how time flies. Well, yeah. I asked Becky to be with us today because um, Becky is like one of the most highly educated um, equine body workers that I know. And what I love about Becky is her never ending passion for continuing her education. And she's always asking questions. And if she can't find an answer, she seeks an answer and she goes to the source. Um, Becky is a certified master's in method practitioner, an equine rehabilitation and assistant equine thermom thermographer, equine ergonomist. She is a photonic health red light pr practitioner and equine kinesio taping practitioner. She has also taken advanced studies in equine cranial sacral therapy, equine fascial manipulation, equine myofascial release, basic and advanced biomechanics by multiple clinics and multiple clinicians, anatomy and dissections, and integrative veterinary integrative veterinary approaches um and that doesn't even include like your heart math coaching that you are yeah. certified in as well right right yeah. there's um, there's a lot of human stuff that i've done when i couldn't correct. it didn't exist correct. yet in the horse correct. world so yes so this is why I asked Becky on and um, to be really honest and fully transparent when we have something going on with our horses and I, we can't figure it out here. Um, and if our local vets get involved and they can't figure it out, Becky's the person that I call. Help, Becky, where, where do we go? What do we do? Um, and awesome. so I am so honored to have you on live today. Ditto. I appreciate you inviting me. It's, okay. it's an honor to be with you, really. No problem. So today we're going to be talking about our favorite topic, horses. Um, and specifically, let's talk about equine body work and rehabilitation and awareness. Um, where do you find, like, because I know you go out, you work on a ton of high, high level competition horses across the world. Um, and what is your biggest challenge that you come across when you are dealing with not just the horses, but like when you're dealing with the horses, the owners, like what's your biggest challenge? Wow. Those are two uh, different life paths. <laughs> 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 The horses are, um, they're so pure. They're so honest. And all of the training that I've gotten from all, everything, you guys included, um, really honors the dialogue with the horse. So I feel like I, I always loved in school to study languages. And I really feel like one of the biggest um, gifts I was given when I started this journey and everything that all the courses I've taken is to be a better conversationalist and a better listener, a better asker and a better listener with the horses. Um, it gets a lot more confusing with humans. They just have a different construct of their brain and they um, think they think differently. They have um, different goals. You know, horses are really simple with their goals. Eat, sleep, you know, do things with other horses. Um, and, um, you know, they don't wake up every morning thinking, ooh, I want to go jump something. Um, Correct. If they, do, if they want to <laughs> a fence or get away. But, um, you know, in terms of the um, 
the work of the the professional equine athlete. And so um, I think for my clients, it's, um, well, I'm blessed. I work with clients who put their horses first. So um, my clients are very interested in um, ensuring that horses, their horses wellness. And if, um, and I um, am also blessed that I am included as one of the team. And, um, and it, that's the best approach when a horse has a team of, of caregivers and everybody on the team plays nicely. Um, and right. most all of the time, that's what I get to participate in. And so in terms of challenges, I guess, um, at this point in my practice, I actually don't encounter that many practices with clients um, because we're all on the same page. We, we all really do want the horse. Now, the, the horse's well-being. Um, you know, that's not to say that I don't come across horses who, um, you know, competition is, uh, yeah, in two hours. And um, the best answer would be time off. That doesn't right. always happen. Um, so, you know, I um, I think if I look back in the past, my biggest challenge has for with the people has either been um, where their priorities are more urgent and less focused on the best interest of the horse. Yep. Or um, I haven't done a good enough job speaking to educate them about what I'm thinking and I've gotten so much better at, <laughs> I've gotten so much better at not just thinking it saying it <laughs> there's an edit feature that 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 has caused me to become you know because in the end people um you know we need everybody to be able to hear one another so I think the fairest thing to say looking back is maybe I wasn't as good at communicating in a way that people could hear. Aha. Uh -huh. That's the safe way to say. <laughs> yes. I, and I think that's something that we all, all, every human on the planet could work on. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, that's a whole nother topic that we won't go down that rabbit hole. <laughs> um, so we're in a hard pass. <laughs> right. Exactly. We're in a hard pass on that one. Um, mm -hmm let's let's talk a little bit more about listening to the horses more what does that look like like what what uh if people are uh watching this listening to this like do you have any recommendations any techniques for them like what was a big aha for you when you learned more how to learn more about listening to the horse I think the biggest aha for me was that there was so much that their body and their expressions were saying mm -hmm. that I I didn't even know it was that talk was going on. And um and furthermore that we could understand it. And and that comes from, I mean, I grew up on an Arabian horse ranch. At the peak, my parents had 110 horses. Oh my, my gosh. Dad, my dad was a farrier. I was on the halter end of thousands of horses when, you know, holding the horse for my dad when he was doing his work. And so it was, you know, I had a very good sense of horses and herd and how, you know, and it's in, in the big picture, how they communicated with one another. But I didn't understand the nuances of, um, of, of physiologic and physical uh communication that was coming out from them and that we could elicit from them. So I first learned that at my weekend course on the Masterson method. And um, I, I was just dumbfounded, frankly, really, truly dumbfounded. Um, so now, you know, I don't know, 13, 12, 13 years out, um, right. my tips would be, uh, first of all, they are communicating. <laughs> Point number <Always>. one. <laughs> Point number one, they're communicating. Um, yep. Point number two, we can learn just, uh, you know, I, I talked about a, a language. We can learn the language of the horse and we can learn what their, um, the nuances of, of what their body is saying. And so I think the first um, advice I ha would have would be to, um, to decide if you want to learn that language. 
And then if you are committed to that, there's a variety of way, places, you know, that you sure. can, that you can learn that. Um, but then if so, so if you've decided to, um, to learn the, the, the art of the dialogue with the horse, um, then I think the next piece of advice I would have is to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, you know, we're just, uh, we think faster, we talk faster, we conclude faster, we look at all the data or some of the data, a portion of the data information, and we make decisions and and then we we we, we jump and we and we reach a conclusion. And so when I say shut up, I mean like all of it. Just I just be willing to arrive. Yes. And be present. And if before you try to engage. Um, and part of that. Um, it's one of the things that when I teach, um, the the thing I say is before you enter the stall, ideally before you get out of your car, but definitely before you enter a stall with a horse, um, just box up your stuff. And we all have stuff. We have historic stuff. We have current stuff. We have future stuff. Um, we have worried stuff. We have happy stuff. We have, we just have stuff. We have all the categories of stuff. And right. um, and. I think what that shows up as one way that I think that shows up is just buzz, like woo, a bunch of bees, all, whatever the, all those little emotions, they're all just buzz, 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 buzz. and I, I suspect that the horses are like, whoa, baby, yeah. you know, not on an auditory perspective, but from a like, whoa, you're just bringing a lot human, like just, and so um, that is a level of presence and yes. thoughtfulness that isn't it? We don't, I think we mostly don't, doesn't even occur to us to right. like take our stuff and purposefully, you know, some people are like OCD and they would like want to have a little book or a little box for all the little topics. Um, other people like whoosh, put it in a bag, leave it in the car. you know, whatever that is for you, um, all of that stuff is going to still be there in the time when the time is done. Um, so, um, of course, there's a lot more, but that's probably a good start. That's a great, you know, it's, I love that you said that because one of the techniques that I recently learned um, from a fabulous horsewoman, she calls it previewing. Okay. What does that and, mean? And what, what that means is, so I got my horse stuff on, I'm going to go play with my horse, right? And yeah. so... As I set my intention of why well, I set my foot out the door and I'm going to the barn, I'm previewing, I'm, I'm putting pictures out to him of let's spend time together. And, yep. um, and like you said, being quiet in, in those moments and letting everything out, you know, leaving everything at the door. And it's interesting because since I've been doing this and observing and observing when I go, okay, I'm going to preview to him, like what, you know, what I, what I don't have an agenda, but I do have an agenda, what I'd like to do today. Yeah. Um, but it starts out with, I'd like to have a conversation with you. Can we have coffee? Um, you know, and he gets the message and you start, you watch like, you know, as I'm getting prepared, you know, he's watching me, he's, he's going. And, um, the interesting, the super interesting thing about it, um, is that my, uh, communication with him and my relationship with him has totally transformed by just implementing that one little strategy yeah it's quite remarkable and um I found myself listening to you saying yep 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 simultaneously in my head I was saying you know 10 years ago you'd have listened to this and you would have been watching these two people have this conversation and you'd have thought both of them were nuts um because I, you know it's um that's an evolution in my understanding of what the possible is and, yeah. and what the reality is. And um, in terms of um, how it's not just horses, how animals, how beings um, can experience 
our intention and our movies that we play in our head. And um, there's actually science to it. You know, I, I have, you know, that long parade of, um, of topics that I've studied and certifications that I've gotten. If it was a modality, I first showed up with the not spoken, but thought, shut up, that doesn't work. But anyway, I'm going to learn it and see what happens. Um, <laughs> it, it's just, um, it's all under, unbelievable. But um, I, uh, I think that's so terrific that that you're experiencing that. And, and um, perhaps the most terrific is that your patient, it requires extraordinary patience. And in my, in my experience, and it also requires, you know, you, you said that agenda word and, um, yeah. you know, like you don't have an agenda, but actually you do, because there's something that you want to do with the horse. Um, right. You know, you have to be willing to decide, well, I guess we're not writing today or whatever that the thing Correct. was you're going to do. Um, Correct. Which, it, um, it has, it has to be completely flexible. Yeah. Um, it has to be completely flexible. And, you know, I don't know that it would work for every person that has a horse, like, and especially people with competition goals, there, there's, it, it becomes quite challenging because of that balance, right? Yeah. Um, I don't have that because I have my, you know, I'm not a competitor. Right. Um, and my priority is my connection with my horse right. and my communication with my horse at a, at a deeper, deeper, deeper level. Um, so that when I do go to do whatever, it's very intuitive. It's almost like intuitive horsemanship. <laughs> and that's not necessarily for everybody. Well, you know, um, and just to be transparent, um, I, I like make appointments for that. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, you know, I, I have a riding lesson every Thursday. And right. like, you know, sometimes I, I just, you know, the thing that popped in my head is like, well, you know, when I was raising my kids, there were times when it was like, well, you know, in my head, I could have sort of a consultation, we could see what the child wanted to do. But meanwhile, we got a doctor appointment. So get up, we got to go. <laughs> so, Correct. So, it, it, um, it's definitely a balancing act, but it also requires a lot of flexibility because absolutely. it's and, you know, and I, I think the really cool thing is for, I mean, for me is that I, I know some things, so how can somebody can see my finger, some things um, about this topic. You know, I, I, um, I've read a book. I haven't gone to one of her sessions yet, but um, there is research out there about in a number of fields um, in the human, most some, mostly in the human world, but the other person I'm thinking about is in the horse world where um, intention and the energy of intention and the powerful results are of intention it is studied scientifically and that's one of those things that you know 15 years ago that i'd like to shut up um but now, now I've read the research. But, but you know what you're absolutely you're absolutely true i mean the whole reason that we sort of that brian actually got into the business aspect of it um is of red light therapy is because i'm really intuitive and yeah. so I feel things in my body. So if I'm working on a horse, I can feel where they're having pain. And yeah. so I'd be working on a horse and I would just put my lights, you know, like where the horse was having pain or where I was drawn to. And people would go, well, why did you choose that point? And I'm like, and this was, you know, 20 years ago. How am I going to explain? Well, I feel it in my body and I'm really intuitive. And I'm communicating with the horse like that wouldn't have flown, you know, when we first started. So Brian was like, um, oh, my gosh, I better I, I better learn this meridian system so I can answer these people's questions. <laughs> right. But you just threw in a different I N word. You threw in intuitive. Yeah, that's your receiving. Yeah what the horse's body is sending out yes intention yes you're sending out so the epic yes. is, is when you see uh when you can combine the listening hearing feeling and not get overwhelmed by it 
That one picture that I sent to you guys was actually with you guys. Uh, uh, the horse, um, where that that picture. I know the horse's name, but um, that was the last day, and I don't recall how many people were in that class, but um, every one of them, me sort of, but every one of them was like literally annihilated. Yes. They were sitting at the edge and yes. it was like, right, Becky, you, me, we got to get them done. Cause I promise we're getting these horses done. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. Um, I remember that. <laughs> that, 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 um, that intuitive piece um, is you being able to cognitively process, in my yeah. opinion, cognitively process right. what you're receiving Um, you happen to be one of those people gifted to receive the physiologically. Some people are receivers and they don't know it. Um, And they they just like, they they get physically kind of overwhelmed. Um, So it's, um, I do not have that gift. I haven't developed it. I'm gonna say it this way. Developed it. Yes. I'm clear now that it's not appropriate to simply say, I don't have it. What I, what I'm clear to is it's like a dog whistle. I wouldn't hear it blow, except it's happening. <laughs> right. So um, whatever is coming out of a horse that that I might be able to feel in my body, I don't feel. And frankly, you know, I'm okay with that for right now. Right. Um, but, um, you know, being able to, uh, to hear what, and, and process and interpret and yeah. at least be willing to try, you know, you're like, oh, okay, well, I'm feeling it here. So I'm going to go there and like, let, you know, you take the light, you put it on. And Brian's like, what are y'all doing? <laughs> um, Correct. <laughs> Correct. Correct. Um, Correct. You know, that's a, that's a lovely, it's not just a gift. It's, it's being, it, it's a, it's like a French break of yeah. a lot of different things on that uh, intuit that intuitive piece, but the combination of the intuition you're receiving and then the intention Right. Thank you. Thank. See, this is why I love you. This is why I love our conversations because <laughs> I wasn't able to put into words, you know, like that piece of it. So it. So thank you for doing that for me. And that's exactly how I felt. I. I was just like, oh my gosh, I'm so intuitive, but here's this whole other aspect of it, and it's like opening up a whole new dialogue and a whole new world, like using it in a completely different way. Yeah. Yeah. And the, um, so the, the intuitive coming toward and the intention going toward it, toward you, toward the practitioner and the intention going out um, is, um, well, you can experience in your own body. If you do, you can experience the intuition or, you know, you can think of someone in the phone rings and you're like, oh, look at you. I was just thinking about you. You know, you, you can right. kind of start trying to make sense of that. But yeah. um, the you can't see or feel in like if you're going to send intentions to someone else, like you should call me. You know? <laughs> <laughs> or, or um, you know, I I, I want. I want to think about a particular part of a horse and, and it should get better. Um, I had my most profound experience with that, the energy of intention and just being able to like <laughs> send, yes. send something was um, a horse that had had a rotational fall. It was a client of mine had had a rotational fall. And um, I was able to watch the video of what, hit first and how that all pro- progressed. And um, so I was asked to work with the horses about four or five days later. And um, I went in to do my assessment. And, um, you know, when I was up around the head, it was that, you know, sort of tiger face that says, you're going to die if you do that. And I was like, okay, I won't do that. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so when I actually uh, got to the part where I needed it was important that I work with that part of the horse. I had uh, just taken two classes. One of them was like really woo woo, you know, for me, it was like, really? Uh, I don't don't know. Um, But anyway, I had had taken the class and gotten the training. And then this book that I have referred to, I read about that where you just simply, you know, what did you say? What did you call it? The the sending a movie, like preview. Preview. 
Okay. Preview. Pre- yeah. preview. I wasn't preview, and I was. It was. This was real time. Oh, uh, right. I was like sending a movie about what I would be doing if I yes. could be doing without getting killed. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I was standing probably. I was in the stall, and I was at the end of the rope, and I was probably about seven feet away, and I was visualizing in my mind the anatomy because you know I'm an anatomy geek and then yes, I was visualizing the fascia because you know I'm a fascia geek. Yeah. And um I was s- sort of sensing I could tell I wasn't sensing I could tell from the video which part ought to be tight. I was straight up not feeling what was tight. But I I could do the right I could do the assessment of what yeah. would be tight. Correct. And so I was just playing a movie. And I was, my hands weren't up. I wouldn't do, I was just standing there. Now I got paid for this. Okay. I was simply standing there. <laughs> yeah, but you weren't because there was stuff wasn't. going on up here. <laughs> I had a lot going on. And it dinged if this horse didn't do what horses do when we treat with the lights or we put our hands on the horse is like, you know, shaking his head and yawning, looking and chewing. And, and so I'm like, well, I don't need my hands to be working. I'm going to get my phone. I'm going to just videotape this. So I held my camera up yeah. while I was working yeah. and um, I've got it on video. Yeah. And then, and then I was like, well, yeah. I wonder if I can actually come over. Cause you know, touch heals. The, the, the contact is good. Correct. So I went over to touch. And so I was lightly touching, but then I'm like, wait, but I'm going to try this again. So <laughs> I put my hand on him and he was like, no, touch me. I'm like, no, I don't want to. I want to just like think it. <laughs> so right. um, it's, um, it was unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that energy of intention is real. Yeah. It's a real thing. Yeah. I love it. I, what I, and this is another thing that I love about you. You acknowledge that you took this way out woo woo class and you didn't know if it was for you and you were super skeptical, but you did it anyways. Yeah. You did it anyways. And that's the thing that I think like so many were, so many people are conditioned to not even try. If they're skeptical, they just close that door. Yeah. And to be able to go, you know, I don't know if it's for me. It might seem pretty far fetched, but hey, we'll give it a shot anyways because I'm already this far in. That's that's the part that I love, and it, and it's and it's one of those things. And I think that you'll agree with me that um, you've taken a ton of cl- tons of classes. You've read tons of books. Um, I'm a continuing education geek in a different way, um, but. Has there ever been anything, any class that you've ever taken that you've actually never used one technique? No, no, yeah. Um, uh, let, well, okay, we'll just be a hundred percent honest here. Yeah. Um, before I uh, was with Brian, I knew about you guys. And I knew about your product, but before I was with Brian at that yeah. Dr. Ridgeway um, course that we were at, yeah, um, the lights hadn't made it up the queue yet because I was like, yeah, I don't know, light, whatever, I don't get it. Right. So, <laughs> <laughs> and then we were at this course, and Dr. Ridgeway, who you know, was just a, an amazing man. Amazing. Um, you know, he did his, his, he taught us what he taught us. And he's like, well, if you're a veterinarian, you can use needles. And if you're not, you can use your finger or you can use one of that guy's lights. And I'm like, ah, crap. Okay. (laughs) If, if my finger will work and a light will work, a light's going to be more effective than my finger. I'm like, okay, Brian, some of your damn lights. (laughs) So I owned the lights and then I was like, okay, well now I got to take the classes. Because right. I got to figure out what to do with them. And um, so one thing led to another. And and so I, I, w- I was like, you know, drug in backwards. Because I really was like, seriously, I, I, I just, I don't know. I'm not sure it's there. But then, but then I chose to. And I have to tell you that 
I have taken a lot of classes and the, you know, you've, you've reorganized your curriculum and how you teach and stuff. But um, uh, to this day, you guys are in the top two, three in terms of your curriculum and how you teach and what you teach. And oh, so, well, um, thank you. Thank welcome. you for that. Uh, thank you for that. But no, there's nothing that I have yeah. um, that I have learned about and then taking courses in that I haven't used some of it yeah. um and and the stuff I haven't used out of a particular course isn't because I don't think it works it's just like well, I don't know okay I cherry pick you know? yeah absolutely pick and um and um you know sometimes I'll do an only red light session it's like yeah. oh they can take his lights <laughs> right. um, Sometimes I'll do only myofascial release, you know, yeah. but most of the time I, I, I sort of, you know, French braid everything together and, you know, right. I'll take a little arrow out of my back and go, yeah. you need yeah. it right there, you know, or, Correct. You know, some, Correct. You know yes. some, something. So I no, there's that. nothing that I have taken. And actually now the things that I haven't taken that were like, okay, I don't think I'll ever take those. Now they're on the list. It's just, you know, triage, you know, right. like, you know, and, and even without taking them, I understand how they work. I understand yeah. the, uh, the mechanism of why they would work. Right. Um, and so I don't start anything now, like, shut up. That doesn't work. Um, I, I started now like, hmm, well, um, I got to learn some more about how to make it work, but I'm sure y'all are, I'm sure it's working. <laughs> right. Right. I love that. I love that. Yay. Well, Miss Becky, if anybody would like to get a hold of you, now I know that you're currently in the middle of building your own courses and building a website. I'm not sure where the website's at, but if anybody would like to reach out to you to chat further or get a consultation, how can they get a hold of you? Like what's going to be their best way to get in contact with you? Yeah, the best thing is through my email um, right mm -hmm. now. So I don't know if you can flash it up or whatever. It's got way too many letters in it, but it's basically okay. yep. Becky at equinebodyworksusa.com. So yeah, send me an email um, because I'm website down and it's not back up yet. Yep. No worries. Thank you so much for, for chatting with me today. We'll see you again soon. You're so welcome. It was great. Thank you so much for having me. And I really, I love you. I'm just sending you a big hug. And Thank I, you. You um, inviting me to come and... Hello, all y'all out there, and um, y'all yeah. know these products work really, really well, so keep using them. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for watching this edition of Photonic Health Presents Health Made Simple. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications for all new Photonic Health videos.